Good evening and welcome to our Sunday evening prayers. We begin with the service of light. If you're following in a prayer book for Australia, that's on page 434. Jesus Christ is the light of the world a light no darkness can extinguish. We'll say together, Hail gladdening light of his pure glory poured, who is the immortal Father, heavenly blessed, holiest of holies, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we are come to the sun's hour of rest. The lights of evening round us shine. We hymn the Father, Son and Holy Spirit divine. Worthiest art thou at all times to be sung with undefiled tongue. Son of our God, giver of life alone. Therefore in all the world, thy glories, Lord, they own. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And I'll read the second Thanksgiving. We praise and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ you are the creator and preserver of the whole world, but above all you are his God and Father, the giver of the Spirit and the ruler of all that is seen and unseen. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. Our, O loving Lord and source of all that is good, accept our evening sacrifice of praise. As you have conducted us through the day and brought us to the night's beginning, keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening and a night free from sin. And at the end, bring us to everlasting life. Through Christ and in the Holy Spirit, we worship you, we offer you all glory, honour and worship, now and forever. Amen. We now continue with Sunday evening prayers. So we turn to page 387 and uh, go to section 3, the opening prayer. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of Lights, Receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 33, page 252. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. For it befits the just to praise him. Give the Lord thanks upon the harp, and sing his praise to the lute of ten strings. O oh, sing him a new song, make sweetest melody with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are faithful. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is filled with the loving kindness of the Lord. By the words of the Lord were the heavens made, and by their numberless stars, so and their numberless stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and laid up the deep in his treasuries. Let the whole earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord frustrates the counsels of the nations. He brings to nothing the devices of the peoples. But the counsels of the Lord shall endure for ever, the purposes of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is that nation whose, whose God is the Lord, the people he chose to be his own possession. The Lord looks down from heaven and surveys all the children of Adam. He considers from his dwelling place all the inhabitants of the earth. 
who fashioned the hearts of them all and comprehends all that they do. The king is not saved by a mighty army, nor is a warrior delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain hope as a deliverer, nor can he rescue any by his great power. But the eyes of the Lord, sorry, but the eye of the Lord is on those that fear him, on those that trust in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and to feed them in the time of dearth. We have waited eagerly for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. Surely our hearts shall rejoice in him, for we have trusted in his holy name. Let your merciful kindness be upon us, O Lord, even as our hope is in you. Lord of life, by the power of the resurrection, deliver us from all selfishness and bring us to the fullness of your joy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. The reading set for evening prayer for All Saints Day is Revelation 19, 1 to 10. After this I heard what seemed to be a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power to our God, for his judgments are true and just. He has judged the great whore who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they said, Hallelujah! The smoke goes up from her for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and all who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. T to her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. And the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. As I said, we celebrate All Saints Day today, the day when we celebrate the uh, many saints in God's kingdom. The many people who've led uh, others to faith and lived faithful lives, uh, lives of self-giving lives that reflect something of the glory of God. And we give thanks today for those saints who have influenced our own lives. Last year I was in Perth and uh, we were there for the Bishop's Conference, but while I was there I went with a few of the other bishops to see um, a volume of the St John's Bible which is an illuminated text of the Bible, um, beautiful illuminations uh, seeking to represent some of the uh, meaning of the scripture passages that they reflect. The picture on the front that you saw is uh, on the front cover of Evening Prayer to this evening comes from that Bible and it's called um, life in community it's based on acts 4 let me just read that passage for you 
Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they held was everything they owned was held in community. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So in that um, icon, life and community, are seated the, the great community of heaven, uh, representing that Acts 4 reading, where there are no boundaries to God's love, but they are seeking to um, embrace all people, and in which people give away their own things for the sake of the community. If you go back and look at that icon later, you'll see at the top Jesus uh, in his ascended glory, and then seated around the table in the middle is Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then the six either side of her are the twelve apostles. And then we come around to some saints of the modern world. For example, seated on the right in a brown habit is a Saint Benedict. I thought as we were reflecting on All Saints Day and the community of the saints of God, I would read you the passage that the artist wrote to go with that piece. In this passage of Acts, Luke describes the ideal community, not the experience of the believers at that time. In truth, the early church was fractious, disorganised and argumentative. The great issue the early church had to face was how to deal with Gentiles who wanted to follow Christ. There were those who believed that these people first had to convert to Judaism before entering the way, as the Christian movement was then called. If Luke's portrayal of the church in this passage, Acts 4, does not reflect the real situation at that point in history, it sh certainly shows a solid understanding of the direction the church should be going. At that time, there were many tensions in the church as it tried to come to terms with its experience of the risen Christ. The tensions and fractures that existed in the early church may have been resolved on a certain theological level, but the fact remains that there are a range of issues that divide not only Christian denominations from each other, but also parishes, congregations and religious communities among themselves, as we know. In all too many cases, people feel compelled to abandon the church because of disputes and scandals. In these verses of Acts 4, Luke wants to point the fledgling community in the direction that will fulfil its vocation as Christ's disciples on earth. And he cites the attributes that mark those who claim to follow Christ. Social justice, honest and faithful leadership, and abundant generosity on the part of the believers. This passage has been the source of inspiration for Christians who over the centuries have tried to replicate Luke's description of the early church in monasteries, parishes and communities. In addition, it is a foundational text for the church's teaching on social justice and the preferential option for the poor. Remarkable and refreshing in its scope, the vision of the church described here witnesses to morality over moralism justice over privilege, and wholeheartedness over miserliness. It is a church that has joy, an open and hospitable joy, as one of its great hallmarks. And I pray that as we celebrate All Saints Day today, so people might say of us that we are a church that marks joy, hospitable joy, as one of our great hallmarks.
Speaking of joy, we now join in a song of great joy, uh, the song of Mary the Magnificat on page 388. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that you have knit together your chosen ones in one communion and fellowship in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give us grace so as to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Saviour, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Our litany for All Saints Day. The response is a response we're used to. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response, of course, hear our prayer. Merciful God, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation to, to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Peter, our Bishop, and all ministers of your Church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the Apostles and Prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving Spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. We bring to you our prayers for those we know who are sick or dying at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those gone before us who have been well pleasing to you from eternity. Preserve in your faith, your servants on earth, guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten the day when many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour and power, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of, your, of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, equip us with everything good, that we may do his will, to whom be glory forever. Amen.